One of our Beat Diabetes viewers shared in a comment that he was home from the military and decided to go to the movies. He was sitting in the theater minding his own business and he just flat out passed out. He believes it was due to metabolic memory. What in the world is that? Here's an interesting comment. This man says, I am 43 years old and I ate anything at any time I wanted during the first half of my life. Well, that was like all of us, really. Uh, well, I won't say all, but most, most of us for sure. Definitely me. I ate whatever I like. You know, and I used to kind of pride myself over being a healthy eater, but the reality was I wasn't anything close to a healthy eater. And he says, I ate whatever I wanted. I ate it any time I wanted. If I want a snack at 10 o'clock before going to bed or 11 o'clock before going to bed, I ate it. If I wanted to eat something, it's, it's early morning. It's 6.30. I just got up, but I want to stuff my mouth with, with some kind of a snack. I, I do it. He says, the first half of my life, in other words, he's 43. He's counting on living to his 80s, which is not guaranteed, but... Uh, there's a good chance now that he's got uh, some wisdom here. He says, I can go the second half and do the opposite. Now, get that. He says, first half of my life, again, he's 43, thinking he can live into his 80s. And he's saying, for those first 43 years, I ate whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. He said, now it's time for me to change and eat a more controlled diet in terms of what I eat and in terms of when I eat. Very, very smart. He says, well, I still could end up dying at the age of 72 or even uh, even due to something else besides diabetes. That's the way life goes. One thing I do know, uh, my death certificate will not say under the cause of death complications from diabetes. <laughs> I love that. And that's my determination as well. We're all going to die. So there's there's no question about that. But we don't have to die with them writing down died of complications from diabetes, which is exactly what they declared when Johnny Cash died. We did a video about that a few weeks ago, and that was the standard answer given by the doctors, by his press people when asked, what did he die of? Complications due to diabetes, a very frequent declaration by people that die. This guy says, I know I'm going to die, but not because of that. Well, very, very wise. So he says, well, that these first 40-some years, I just ate whatever I liked. I can't do that now. Very smart. It reminded me of the scripture where Jesus said to Peter, when you were young, you walked where you wished. He says, when you get older, someone's going to lead you where you don't want to go. In other words, he was predicting Peter would die for his faith in Christ. But that statement, when you were younger, you walked where you wished. I, I can convert that just slightly and say, when we were younger, we ate whatever we wished. We ate whenever we wished. We didn't give a thought to health and healthy eating. And if we did give a thought to it, we were wrong because they were all telling us that fat is the evil monster. And so as long as you avoid fat, just enjoy the sugar, enjoy the chips, enjoy the, the white bread sandwiches and all the other stuff, just to avoid that nasty, nasty meat. And so we kind of assumed to uh, cut back on the meat a little bit and the rest is fine. And we were dead wrong. Here is a comment uh, in regard to something I stated a while back where I talked about how our body has a memory. So if we're used to eating high carb, our body expects our next meal to be high carb and it will pump out lots of insulin. And if we ever do a low carb meal, the body is kind of shocked and it's already started to pump out the insulin and you may get too much. And the reverse is true as well. If you eat day after day and week after week with very low carb meals and suddenly you eat a big old monster carb meal and you're eating mashed potatoes, and you're eating a couple of slices of bread, and you have a big old dessert, and you're not used to that. You haven't been eating that way for months, and suddenly you do. Your body is shocked. It will not produce much insulin because it hasn't been needing to produce much insulin for the last months, and so your blood sugar may jump way high. So anyway, this person heard me talk about this metabolic memory that our bodies have, and he says uh, he went into the military when he was younger. He says, I went into basic training 
He said, I couldn't even do the minimum of 10 pull-ups to graduate, but I restricted my food intake to vegetables and rice. He said, yeah, I know. <laughs> In other words, I know rice isn't really good for me. He says, I lost weight. I was able to do my pull-ups within six weeks. I was transferred to tech school base for three months. It was a dorm style with a cafeteria downstairs that was always open, always had dessert, always had ice cream. So now he's through basic training. He's in tech school in the, whatever branch of the military he's in. And they have a cafeteria that's always open and always has all kinds of sugary desserts. He said, I had a dessert after every lunch and every dinner for six weeks. Then I went on leave for the weekend to Dallas. I ate my normal three meals a day, just like he'd been doing while he was in the military. Now he's on leave. He says, but I didn't eat desserts. Now, up till then, he had been eating a dessert with every lunch and every dinner. But now he says, I skipped desserts. By Saturday night, I was sitting in a movie theater. After dinner, I started to feel sick. I got up. I walked out to get some air. The last thing I remember was a hand pushing the door open. The next thing, I was laying on the floor with people all around me. I tried to get up. I fainted again. They called an ambulance. The EMT immediately suspected low blood sugar. Very smart. If you feel like fainting, one of the first things to check is what's going on with the blood sugar. And certainly I've been there. He says uh, they, they found out my blood sugar was very low. He says, I wish I could remember the number, but he doesn't. Somebody brought me some M&Ms. After 30 minutes, I got up and walked out. After that, I weaned myself off desserts. This happened in a matter of three months of conditioning my body. I had never, I have never been obese or diagnosed with diabetes. I just conditioned my pancreas to expect massive sugar intakes every meal for six weeks, and then I deprived it of that sugar for three meals, and boom. The body was so used to all that sugar and all those carbs that when he had a lower-carb meal, the pancreas released surges and just gushed with insulin to try to keep up with what it were remembered had been going on for the last six weeks, high carb every meal, and it was too much. There just weren't enough carbs to deal with. And what happens is if you get a surge of insulin and there's not enough carbs in your meal to deal with, you will go low and you may faint. You could even die. So you got you to gotta be careful. That's why if you're going from a high carb standard diet to a low carb keto diet, you'd better wean your way into that. You'd better not just go cold turkey because your body's going to be in for a shock and uh, your body will figure it out after a couple of weeks. So it's not like your body can never figure it out. It will figure it out. But for a while, uh, you need to wean your way in or if you're going the opposite direction, which I hope you aren't, but if you, if you do, you'd need to wean your way out. And, um, that's why some people that go really low carb and then they say, well, you know, I think I'll test my blood sugar, see if I'm doing any better. So they have a big old baked potato and they've been low carb for, for a couple of months, several months. And then they think, all right, well, let's see if I'm any better. See if my insulin resistance has gone down. So eat a big old monster baked potato and maybe some other carb, maybe uh, gulp, gulp down a large Coca-Cola with their baked potato. Now, their, their body's not used to that. Their body is so used to low-carb meals, it doesn't put out much insulin. It's, it's kind of in a state of shock and doesn't know what to do. This is a whole new thing for it. And their blood sugar jumps up all over the place, and they're at 250, and they get all depressed thinking, well, man, uh, I, I haven't made much progress. I mean, sure, I've got my blood sugar low by eating low-carb, but the first time I have a baked potato and a Coke, look what happens. I'm at 250. Well, your body wasn't ready for that. So if you are going to perform one of those tests and you really want something fairly accurate, <laughs> you probably need uh, several days to kind of get your body up to speed that, yeah, I'm going to be starting to eat carbs again. And uh, if you don't do that, you may assume, well, boy, my insulin resistance is worse than ever. I haven't gained a thing by doing low carb. Well, you probably have gained a lot, but you shocked your body by eating a high-carb meal after months of low-carb meals. I want to announce an exciting new format that will be added to my Bible teaching channel, which goes by my name, Dennis Pollock. Most of my uploads have been on Mondays where I post videos that I call Video Devos. These are short talks that focus on one particular Bible topic. And I'll continue to post these video devos on Mondays, but now I'm adding a new type of video that will be posted on Thursdays. 
These will involve Bible studies that Benedict and I will do at our dining room table. We'll be going through various books or sections of the Bible in a relatively short, easy to digest, user-friendly format. So catch the video devos on Mondays and the Bible studies with Ben and me on Thursdays. I believe you'll be blessed.